I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for your families. I want to pray for your children. I want to pray for those grandchildren. I want to pray for those that are having problems on their jobs. I want to pray for those that are in lack because God can meet every need. He don't just want us to go through life and just live life, but the Lord wants us to have life more abundantly. We're going to pray that the enemy will take his hand off of your blessings. And we're going to believe God for the supernatural things. How many in here can believe God for the supernatural things? Do you really believe he's able? Do you really believe that he is God? Do you believe that, that he is a restorer? Do you really believe that he is a healer? Do you really believe that he is a deliverer? Do you know that he can liberate your mind? Do you know that he can liberate your situation? Hallelujah. Let's believe the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that the spirit of the living God come and meet us where we are. We pray that your Holy Spirit will loose the bound and set the captive free. We pray that your anointing will fall upon this place today. In the name of Jesus. We pray that you will meet every situation in the name of Jesus. Meet every need in the name of Jesus. Let there be no lack in any way, form, or fashion. But we trust you for our resources. And we, are, we thank you, God, for what you have already done in our life. We believe in you for job situations, for job opportunities to that you open up doors that when you open up a door that no man can shut God we believe in you for our children and our grandchildren that you will save our grandchildren we pray and lift up our children God those that have swayed away we pray that you will bring them back to the house of God we pray that the sons will turn back to the fathers and the daughters will turn back to the mothers spirit of the living God we call upon your name you said that there is no other name on the heaven and earth whereby we must be saved. But it is the name of Jesus. So we call upon the name of Jesus because we believe that there is power in the name of Jesus. We, we believe that if we speak your name with power and authority, God, we know that there is nothing that you can't do. We know that there is no a situation that can't be turned around. So we trust you today, God. And our faith is on the line in the name of Jesus. Give us the faith that we need. You said that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. So our faith is going to be tested and our faith is on the line. And so we believe you, God, today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We glorify you. We glorify you. We give you homage. We give you praise. We thank you, God, in advance for our breakthrough. We thank you in advance because you're moving, God. That mountain seems like it can't be moved. We exercise our faith and we speak to the mountain in the name of Jesus that you will give us the faith not to move that mountain physically, but that our faith will be able to be able to go so and surpass that mountain. Whatever is calling us not to move forward, we speak to that stumbling block in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every broken relationship, every marriage, we speak in the name of Jesus. We speak unity in the homes. Unity among the husbands and unity among the wives. In the name of Jesus, help us to get past our flesh. In the name of Jesus. So we call on you today, Jesus. We call on you today, Jesus. We ask that you will fill our young people with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That they will begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God begins to give utterance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fill us. Till our cup runneth over. Yes. Fill us yes. until we get our breakthrough. Yes. Fill us yes. in the name of Jesus.
until the anointing pour out of us. Fill us. Fill us, fill us, fill us. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you honor for what you're going to do. Thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles that you're already working. We trust you in every encounter. We trust you in every endeavor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but I feel the anointing in here. I feel like God wants to do something in your household today. I feel like God wants to do something supernatural in your life. If you have been fasting and praying, I'm going to tell you right now, God is going to do something for you if you are believing Him for something. Amen. How many believe in God for something in this house? Yes. Glory to God. We honor all the people of God that are here today. We continue to lift up our pastor and our, our, our assistant pastor, Bishop Stacy, and, and his lovely wife of Ravenette. We want to keep them in prayer. Amen. Amen. The enemy uh, wants to attack the body of Christ. And whether you believe it or not, the enemy desires to sift you like wheat. Yes. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter who he uses. He wants to come in and destroy your faith. Everything that you have learned about God, he wants to destroy your faith. Everything, every sacrifice that you have poured into the kingdom, the devil wants to strip you of it. But the devil is a lie. And the devil is losing, hallelujah, in the spirit realm. Amen, amen. He is a defeated foe. Yes, and I don't care how big the devil look to you in your life. He's not bigger than God. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles today, I know that this word is from the Lord. It seems like when the Lord gives me a word of God, no doubt about it, someone is going to get up and quote that scripture or talk on something about it. So I know that this word is from the Lord today, and I have been fasting my wife and I, have, we have been seeking the Lord and asking God for wisdom, uh, guidance, and understanding, and, and asking God to do something supernatural in our lives. And we are believing God for the body of Christ, that God will do some things in your life, and, and God will do some healing in your life. Amen. Not just physically, but we want the Lord to heal. Amen. We want your mind set right. We want our minds to be transformed by the renewing of God's word. And how many know that when you begin to apply yourself in the word of God, God will change your heart. And that's what we want. We want God to change your heart. If you have envy in your heart, if you have malice, strife, and all that uh, stuff that is hidden, that nobody can see, we're going to pray that God will clean all of that stuff out of your heart. And we're going, to, uh, we're going to speak those things like David said whenever he went out and had an encounter with uh, a woman that was on a rooftop. And he began to ask God to forgive him. And the first thing that he said, Lord, created me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. And my prayer is that God will clean everything out of you that should be there. Uh, yeah. That all of that junk that is in the trunk yes. be thrown out because it's not doing you any good. And sometimes when you look at it from the spiritual point, sometimes we just need to waste because nobody wants to be constipated. Uh, Come on, Bishop. Can I get a witness? Come on, Bishop. Hallelujah. If it needs to come out of me, I want it to come out of me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If you would, if you got your Bibles today, I'm going to read three.
three scriptures. And I'm going to release this word the best way I know how. Ephesians 6 and 12. Ephesians 6 and 12. I believe somebody read that scripture today. Sister, Sister Brenda? Yes. Will you please stand to your feet as we read the word of God? Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Then if you would go over to the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence take it by force. Matthew 17, verse 21. How be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Father, we thank you for this word. I decrease that you may have all the increase and that your Holy Spirit would work in a magnificent way as you speak through me. Touch someone heart. Let their heart be open and receptive to hear what the Spirit is saying to this house. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, I want to thank God for my lovely wife, Adela. Amen. I honor her today. Amen. And if you, you have children, you can go at the back. She's teaching the children today. I want to leave for a little subject today. And I want to talk about how to take the fight to the devil and win. Does anybody want to learn how to take the fight to the devil and come out on top? Oh, yes, sir. How many know that God has called you to be a winner? Yes, sir. Do you know that it is not I, but it is the Christ that lives on me that causes me to triumph in every circumstance that I am in? And so... My beloved brother and my beloved sister, the Lord is calling out today for aggressive Christianity. He is looking for violent Christians. And uh, the, the battle is not for the chicken hearted, neither is it for those who cannot fight, nor the easily discouraged. I'm here to tell you today that he is looking for those who will slay giants. Those who will go up to the gates of the enemy and call them out for a fight. Yes. And Jesus says, behold, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh -huh. This means that there is conflict and we must fight. There is conflict between uh, the flesh and the spirit and we as people of God, we have to rise up and we have to defeat, defeat the enemy through our prayers. Uh -huh. Because our warfare is not between our brother or our sister. They're, our brother and our sister is not out to get us. But it is a, it is a devil that is working in the children of unbe unbelievers who causes people to rise up against you. Because the kingdom suffered violence, but we as people of God, we have to learn how to take the kingdom by force. And so God is looking for people who are, ten who are tenacious and have the tenacity to go after the devil and tell the devil, get out of my house and get out of my children and get out of my husband and get your hands off of my job. You have to be aggressive and go to the devil and mean it. Amen. And all of those who were successful in the Bible, 
the Bible talks about how they were confronters. When we look at the life of Moses in Exodus, the 10th chapter, uh, verse 28 and also 29, it talks about he went to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see my face no more, for in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. Then in 29th verse he says, And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well, I will see thy face again no more. And although Pharaoh was a powerful king, Moses dared to confront him. Sometimes you got to confront the confronter. Uh, when you look at the life of Elijah in 1 Kings 18, chapter verse 17 and 18, the Bible said that it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Thou art thou he that troubled Israel. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Yes. And then he goes on down into uh, 1 Kings uh, 21 chapter, verse 20. Then he meets them again and said, And they have said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O my enemy? He says, and he answered, I have found thee because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. And then we go on down to Brother Daniel. You, are, you, you remember Brother Daniel, don't you? He, he made it known that he was praying to the living God and, and did not mind being arrested and thrown into the lion's den. And, uh, and of course, the Lord kept him and the lions did not eat him up. I said this to that to say this. When we are seeking God and when we are petitioning God and when we are on our feet and we have a prayer life like Daniel did, he would open up the windows and he would pray and he would seek God three times daily. Don't you know that when you seek God's face, don't you know that I don't care what situation that God allows you to be in, if God is with you, who can be against you? And God can actually, what God did, he actually shut the mouth of the lion. Yes, yes. God is awesome. Yes. And then we, we go on down and we see about these three Hebrew boys. What would you say of Shadrach and, and Meshach and Abednego who confronted the Nebuchadnezzar and later refused to bow to the golden image? Uh -huh. Hallelujah. They told him that their God would deliver them. They even added that in case God decided uh, uh, to allow them to burn in the fiery furnace, they still would not bow. And how many know that you really makes the devil mad when you don't do what he said? Well, well. So what did the king do? He said, turn up the furnace seven times hotter. Yes. And it doesn't matter how much the enemy turns up the heat, God will meet you right in the heat. Yes, yes. And so uh, this means that they dared the authority of the most powerful king at that time, and they conquered. And in fact, through the incidents, the king came to the acknowledgement of the Lord God and recommended that he should be worshipped. How many of y'all know that God will turn the situation around? Those that mock your God, God will, all, will cause the one that is mocking your God to become a worshiper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That tells me that God can change anybody. If you're an atheist and you don't believe the principles and precepts of God's word, God can change your heart and turn you around to be a believer. Come on, Bishop. And, say, and so all of these men were all confronters. And when you are violent like this, the devil tries to avoid you. Now how, how can I take this fight to the devil and win? If you, I, I want to first by saying this. If you don't confront the problem, you will never conquer it. If you don't confront it, you will never conquer it. 
And so what do you have to do? You First of all, you have to identify the problem. All right. And then you got to ask yourself, what are you battling with? What are you battling with? Some of us are battling with some stuff, some hard stuff. What am I battling with? The Bible said to let every man examine himself to see where he stands. Some of you are battling with some, some sexual uh, uh, mm -hmm. Some 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 fornication issues, and oh some of you are battling with some 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 issues where you can't quit stealing. Some of you are battling with some issues in your your flesh. Yeah. Amen. It's causing your flesh uh, to rebel against God. But whatever the issue is, uh, you got to identify the problem if you want some healing in your life. Yeah, some of you are dealing with some anger issues. If you don't confront the anger that is causing you to blow off, hallelujah, that is troubling your mind every time you uh, get come in contact with somebody and try to make peace, something on the inside of you just rises up in you and wants you to just cuss that person out. God called us to be peacemakers. And so what are you battling with? It is a physical. It, 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 is it a is it a physical sickness or spiritual affliction? Is it a curse? Is it a covenant? It is. Is it demon demonization? Is it self inflicted? Is it the activity of drinkers of blood and eaters of flesh? It is. Is it bewitchment? Is it household wickedness? Is it unfriendly friends? What is it? So you got to ask the question. Lord, how can I defeat the devil and win every time? I want you to know that nothing is ever conquered until it is openly and clearly identified. Let me just give you a quick story. If you put a soldier on the battlefield and command them to shoot the enemies, it means you have briefed them on the enemies. They would ask who or what the enemies look like, what they are likely to be putting on, and from which direction are they coming from. They would map out a strategy and work out the best way of conquering it. But if they are not briefly or brief, uh, it, but if they are not brief beforehand, it means you want them to shoot in the air for nothing. And in the process, the enemies will get them. How many of y'all that know that all fear must go? Amen. All fear must go. Amen. I said all fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. All fear must go. And what the enemy wants you to do, he wants you to walk in fear. And if you look at every example that I just made of all them that were confronters I mentioned above, you will notice that none of them feared the adversary. None of them. When the devil sees that you are not afraid of death, he will flee. The weapon he uses in discouraging the people of God from confronting him is death. But if you're like Paul, who sees death as no threat, the devil will flee. You have become dangerous in the kingdom of God. And here, hallelujah, Paul was dangerous in the kingdom of God. How many understand that it doesn't matter if you kill me or not, I'm, in, I'm still going to win. I'm in a win-win situation. He says in Philippians 1 and 21, verse 21 through 23, for me to live is Christ, and to die is what? Gain. And then he said in 22nd verse, he said, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I want not. Then he said in verse 23, For I am in strait between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. So, so Paul understood that he says, If you kill me or not, I'm still going to win. Why? Because I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Why? Because to be absent yes. from this body, yes. that means that I get to go right on in yes. to the presence of God. Yes. And this is why you don't want to die without 
Jesus. Yes. Can I get a witness? Amen. You do not want to die with if you don't know Jesus. Amen. You better get Jesus before you can you can uh, be courageous and before you can start commanding some things in the spiritual realm, you better make sure that you are right with your God. Yes. Because if you're not, the enemy will eat you alive. And that's why come the Bible says that the enemy, he comes to steal. He comes to, to, to steal, kill, and to destroy. That means that he wants to wipe you out. That means he wants to demolish you. That, won't he, that means that he wants to get rid of you, period. And so the enemy has to be confronted. And you should not back out. You cannot employ a prophet to pray your prayers for you. You got to learn to do it yourself. Sometimes we run it after all these false prophets. We run it from this church and, and that church to hear a, a prophet to give us a word of prophecy. There's some things you better learn how to do yourself. Hallelujah. Yes, your pastor can pray for you, but you need to learn how to pray for yourself. You need to learn how to speak to your own problems and speak to your own situations and learn how to uh, uh, lay your hands on your own self and say, self, align myself to the principles of God. Yes, Lord. Uh -huh. Align yourself. Lord, I speak my own breakthrough yes, over my own self. Lord, I speak my own deliverance over my own self. Lord, I speak my own healing over my own self because you have given me authority and you have given me power to lay hands upon the sick that they may recover. Hallelujah. And so we as people of God, we got to get down to, to the business of God and get real with God. First of all, you got to admit that it is there. You got to identify it. How let somebody say you got to identify it? Yeah. Amen. You got to you got to recognize it. Don't act like it ain't there. Hey, no. Some of us have been putting on a facade. You know you got some stuff that you're dealing with. You need to deal with it and you need to identify it. You got hatred and malice against your brother. The Bible said to go to your brother, uh huh, and him alone, and try to get it right. That's right. That's word. If you got something at all, forgive. Yes. Yes. Some yes. stuff went on on twenty years ago, and you still haven't let some stuff go. So you got to identify what is it that's keeping me from going forward in my life. I'm tired. A being between a rock and a hard place. I got to go forward in my life because uh, you, you can't go forward looking back. I got to learn how to press toward the mark of the high calling. And the high calling is in God the Father. And yes, you have been guilty of some stuff. We all have been guilty of some stuff. Matter of fact, the Bible says that we all were sinners. Yes. Oh. We all have fallen short of yes. the glory of God. But yes. we can get it right. But we've got to identify where we need help. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somebody shout yes. yes. And so you got to face facts. And bring the reality to yourself. The second thing you got to do is you got to commit it to the Lord. How let somebody say commit it to the Lord. Commit to the Lord. Otherwise, in other words, you got to be particular and specific as you go before the Lord. So that he will handle it for you. How many know that God can handle it for you? Yes, he handles it. Uh, and we have to have enough trust in God that when we give it to the Lord, that he can handle it. The Bible said to come on you that are labor and that are heavy late. He said, I'll give you rest. And when I give you rest, I'm going to give you rest in your soul. Yes, Lord. 
Your soul is going to be at rest. But you got to give it to him. I don't care how heavy it is. It's heavy on your heart. You came to church with some heavy stuff on your heart. Some heavy weight on your heart. Why don't you leave that stuff at the altar? Why don't you release that stuff and say, Lord, I can't get rid of it because it's 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 done took it over my mindset. I can't think right, I can't act right, and it's causing me to uh manifest some stuff that is in my heart. And I don't like what I see that's in my heart. So Lord, I want to cast it into your care. Yes. And number three, somebody say release it. You gotta release it. He says, cast the fear upon the Lord and leave it there because he cares for you. How many know he cares for you? And if he cares for you, that means he wants the best for you. He is concerned about your welfare. He is concerned about your household. He's concerned about your children. You've been believing for your children. God is concerned about your children. He is concerned about the problems that you've been having on your job. He wants you, hallelujah, to release it. He wants you to release it. And then number four, somebody says, stand firm and don't look back. Stand firm and don't look back. Why? Because faith must kick in. Faith must come in. Have violent faith in the Lord. And, and let me just say this real quick because sometimes people think just because you got faith that you're going to become the smartest guy in the world. Come on, Bishop. Hallelujah. Let me tell y'all something. Faith is not knowledge. Come on. Neither is it certainty. It is the use of your spiritual hands to accept what God is offering you. Using your spiritual eyes to see beyond the circumstances surrounding you. God has given us an eye to see through the eye gate of faith. To see things that other people can't see. And that is a gift from God. So if God has caused uh, has uh, delegated the gift of prophecy to you and to begin to show revelations to you. You ought to thank God. That is not knowledge. That is what God is revealing to you from the Spirit. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And so it goes beyond the superficial to the Spirit behind a problem. It goes beyond the symptoms that, and handles the root of the cause. It is a decision. It is an action, not just something passing. It is, a, it, it, it is great to just trust God like a, like a little child and lift things up to him. But spiritual violence has got to flow, y'all. Yes, yes. God wants us to yes. get off of the milk. Yes, yes. You've been on the milk too long. You, I say you've been uh, on that milk too long. Now it's time to eat the meat of the word. Yes. Hallelujah. I want to see some growth in the people of God. Yes. If, if, hallelujah. I want to see some growth in the people of God. Hallelujah. I'm tired of the people of God going around the same old mountain and never getting the victory. Come on, Bishop. Yes. Dealing with the same old, same old problem. Dealing with the same old fleshly habit. The same old fleshly thing that's causing you to go forward. Now it's a time, we're living in a time where we better get right with God because he's soon to come back. Yep. The Bible said that he's coming back for a church yes. without spot, yes. wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. Yes. And so we desire mm. the meat of the word. Mm. We desire to be full of the knowledge of God. We desire to be full of the spirit of God. We want to be able to, to, to uh, 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 grasp and reveal the mysteries of God. But we got to get violent in prayer. And the Bible talks about righteous anger. 
There's nothing wrong with being angry, but the Bible says some of us, we have gotten so angry that it has become a sin. Yes. We have, we, we have gotten so angry that we have flipped off the handle and we're cussing everybody out. And sometimes we, we, we can't keep a job because we go from job to job cussing the boss man out because we want to tell the boss man what to do instead of us just humbling ourselves. The Bible said, obey them that are masters over you. That's talking about the, 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 the one who, who, is, who oversee you. Amen. Hallelujah. It, it could even talk about it can even be talking about your pastors and your shepherds, your under shepherds, them that God has called to be rulers over you, for they watch it over your soul. And so you gotta get violent and you but you gotta stay humble in it. Come on, somebody. And it's good to have a righteous anger. Let me tell y'all something. Holy anger is exercised when God's enemies are assuming positions outside their right. You can rebuke the enemies and aggressively stop them in what they are doing. And the Bible says, he says, resist the devil. And guess what he going to do? He shall what? Flee. And so... I would say that today is a day to con confront and conquer. Yeah. Uh, You're going to conquer this thing today. Yeah. Hallelujah. You should know what you want to conquer. And I want you to conquer. And I want you to aggressively address it. you got to learn, and you're going to learn today, that you're going to learn how to defeat the enemy. And you're going to have the devil on the run. All right, Bishop. That's just like a brother who's got the ammunition and somebody's coming out to him, but he's got a shotgun, but he's running with the shotgun. Uh, in other words, God has given us the, uh, the ammunition, but we got to learn how to use the ammunition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And, and, and instead of us running from the devil, we should have the devil running from us. Yeah. We should get aggressive. Get out of my house. Yeah. Get out of my children. Yeah. Get out of my husband. Yeah. Get out of my finances. You better learn how to speak some things and be angry about it. I'm tired of letting the devil come into my house and cause division in my house. Hallelujah. This devil got to see his way out. This, this, is, this conversation is between A and B, and you got to see your way on out. Uh -huh. Yes, Lord. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't even know why I'm on this, but y'all know there are happy people, unhappy people don't want to see you happy. Come on, There's some busy bodies that's running through uh, the church. And I wouldn't say that they are part of the kingdom. I, I say they, they just are distractions. Come on, Bishop. Hallelujah. Because I don't have time. To be running from house to house, uh, sowing discord in your house. I got peace at my own house, and it's going to stay that way, and I'm not going to let no devil in hell rob me of my peace. I got the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, and you can have it too. Come on, somebody. You better get aggressive. I say you better get aggressive. You better, you better go in prayer. You better learn how to talk to God about the adversary because the adversary want to kill you. He want to break some stuff up. Hallelujah. He want to break your prayer life. And, 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 it, and it's not nothing but a distraction. Some of this stuff ain't nothing but a distraction. You know your kids didn't start acting up until you actually start fasting and praying. And now they want to show up behind. Come on, y'all. They want to start acting a fool. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You better get that little uh, rat's tail and say you're going to act right in this house. In this house, we serve the Lord. Yes. In this house, you're going to line up. Yes. Hallelujah. You better
how to get aggressive. Because if you don't, the enemy will run over you. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, and I want the devil, I don't know about y'all, but I want the devil to know that I'm mad at him. Uh-huh. I am mad at the devil. And that's why I come uh, when you get mad and when you've had enough. You're going to do something about it. You're going to get violent. You're going to get aggressive. Come out of that pity party. You've been in that pity party. How many years you've been in that pity party? You've been blaming everybody for your past mistakes. Blaming everybody for your lack of responsibility. Blaming everybody for your shortcomings and for your failures. The devil is a lie. Don't you make the devil make you feel like you not a child of the king? Especially when you know you're doing right. The devil is a lie. Yes. Don't you make the devil make you feel guilty of something that you did over 30 years ago and they want to bring it up in your past? The Bible said that there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. Yes, I used to be a, a drug addict. And yes, I probably was a pimp. So what? Yes, I do got a past.
my spirit that God is changing somebody's heart. I see in my spirit that God is turning it around. He's turning it around on, on your behalf. Yes, sir. I see God turning it around. The enemy meant it for, for evil, but God turned it around for your good. I see God changing the course of your direction. I see God moving on your behalf. I see God, yes, Lord, running the devil out of your house. Yes, Lord, I see God. I see God moving instantaneously. I see God filling somebody with his Holy Spirit. I see God. I see somebody coming back to God with their head down. I see somebody saying yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your word. Yes, God. Heal me, God. Of my brokenness. Heal me, God. Yes, God. I missed the mark. But I see God restoring somebody. Yes, God. If that's you, raise your hand and say, yes, Lord. I surrender. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. I'm tired. But yes, God. I got my strength. My strength is coming back. I see my strength. church. I'm never in attendance and I don't really have 
a personal encounter with Jesus. Well, today is a brand new day. God said, I'm giving you a brand new beginning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God said, I'm giving you a brand new beginning. Yes. Know that you cannot. I want you to understand that you cannot approach God in your sinful state. The Bible says to confess him. He says confess your sins. And he is faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You got to learn how to claim the redemptive power in the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on the cross at Calvary for the remission of your sins. He died that you may live. He became sin for you. on the inside of you and so you need to ask the Lord to come into your life and become your personal savior yes Lord this is how you win do you really know how to win do you really want to know how to win you got to enthrone him over the affairs of your life and tell him that you will never go back to the world of Satan anymore. I'm kicking Satan out of my house. Satan, get out of my house. Satan, get out of my children. Satan, yes!
I said to you, I'm talking about the devil. When I'm pointing, I'm not pointing. I'm saying the devil. You point at the devil. And I said, hey, you devil. I come against you. In the name of Jesus. You chariot of fire from heaven. Chase away every anti-promotion spirit. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Glorify yourself in my life. In the name of Jesus. You see, when you begin to call on the name of Jesus, something begins to happen. Oh, turn around, turn around, turn around. Turn around. There's something powerful about the name of Jesus. There's a power that is written. Impossibility upon any part of my life. Be paralyzed in the name of Jesus. I prophesy unto my problems. Become testimonies. In the name of Jesus. You perpetrators that confronted my destiny. Receive the stones of fire. In the name of Jesus. I pray that I break the power of the demonic spell that was issued against my life and I come against it in the name of Jesus uh, let all the footholds and seat of the enemy in my life be abolished in the name of Jesus oh God be my hiding place and preserve me from evil in every area of my life in the name of Jesus I cast every masquerading problem into the Red Sea in the name of Jesus. Lord, send your angels to battle on my behalf in the name of Jesus. All the tax and traps of the enemy be frustrated in the name of Jesus. And I speak that I walk in divine safety and I refuse to enter into the net of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Somebody say the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The Bible said the name of Jesus. There's a strong power where the righteous they run in and they are saved. And so I speak. Let all those who, who trouble my Israel be disbanded and confused. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of every spirit and every ritual. Hallelujah. That is evil. That is aimed at me. In the name of Jesus, I break every demonic bondage. 